Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at the band descriptors for task one, which means by the end of the lesson, you're going to understand how the IELTS examiner is assessing and giving your task one report a final band score. Let's jump right in. So, the IELTS examiner uses the same set of rules and assessment criteria to mark all reports. They're slightly different for task one and task two, but they always use the same guidelines to give a grade to people's writing. These guidelines are called the band descriptors. So you were scored on both task one and task two from band score one to nine. One being low, nine being highest, almost at a native level of writing. Now, the often cited target score is from band six or seven upwards. And this is often what is required to get into universities abroad or to gain employment. Now, throughout this lesson, we'll look a little more closely into the IELTS examiner's band descriptors, because if we understand what they are looking for, it's easier to include it in our writing. And throughout the course, I will be referencing the band descriptors in lessons to give you a better idea of why we are focusing on certain writing skills. Just to give you an understanding of what the band descriptors look like, here we have the band descriptors for IELTS Task 1. And we can see they go from band score 6 all the way to the top of band score nine. And you can see they're split into four categories or four segments. We'll look at this more closely. There's no need to pause the video now, but this is just to give you an idea of the kind of assessment criteria the examiners use. Let's take a more focused look at the four sections. So the band descriptors are split into four, with each section 25% of the final grade. We have task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, and grammatical range and accuracy. All four criteria are split equally and give you your final band score. So task achievement is how well you answered the question. Coherence and cohesion is how well you structured your answer using paragraphs, for example. Lexical resource is all about the vocabulary and language you use in your writing. And grammatical range and accuracy, as I'm sure you can guess, is all about your ability to use different grammatical structures. Now we'll take a look at task achievement in a little bit more detail. So task achievement measures how well you answered the question and importantly for task one, how well you reported the key information or data from the question you've been given. So you will need to fully answer the question. So give a detailed response to the data that you have, whether that's a bar chart or anything else. Now you don't need to really describe every single figure and change and number that you see. Simply put, your report would be too long. So we focus on the main pieces of information we can see. We'll cover this a lot more later in the course. We again need to identify the key trends or changes over time in data and, of course, the key features that we see. So we only report the most significant and obvious figures and then we explain them in some detail. 
We also need to give an overview of the visual information. So this is everything we need to do to get a band score of at least a seven. Now, an overview is actually something I suggest to write in one short paragraph. And it gives the big picture of what's happening with the data you see. Again, we'll be looking at how to write these overview paragraphs later in the course. So here are the band descriptors for task achievement. And if you want to pause and have a quick read through, of course, you can do that. But I can summarize for you now. Give a detailed re response that summarizes main details and compares data when relevant. You only need to compare data if it makes sense to do so. Include an overview, so give a big picture of what you can see from the data. Make sure you report accurately, so the numbers and figures you report are accurate. And you must write over 150 words. Let's move on to coherence and cohesion. So this is all about organizing your writing into logical sections. And paragraphing is a great way to do this. So we need to clearly organize our report into logical paragraphs. And the best way to do this is to use the four step structure. I'll teach you in the next section of the course. You'll also need to group data into logical sections so that it's easier to follow your report. So generally try and stick to one piece of information or data per sentence or section of your writing. Also use cohesive devices to link ideas and sentences. So cohesion means understanding. Cohesive devices are types of writing and phrases we use to help explain our ideas. So cohesive devices such as openers and linking phrases. We can also see. Furthermore, so these are all kinds of language we'll use in our writing. And here are the band descriptors for coherence and cohesion for band seven, and they're highlighted here. So to get a band seven, we must use clear paragraphing to structure the report, which makes it easier to understand. We'll also be using the four step structure, although this doesn't necessarily have to be used, but I really recommend using it. And we'll look at this later in the course. And you'll need to report on data in clear sections with logical ordering. And finally, use linking words and sentence openers to organize your writing. So let's move on to lexical resource. Now, lexical resource is a measure of how well you use a range of vocabulary and language. So you need to use a range of vocabulary without repeating yourself, which is the important thing to remember. Don't repeat vocabulary too often throughout your report. As well, you'll need to use some quite advanced vocabulary to accurately discuss and report the key information you can see. And also, you'll need to make sure that you're spelling words accurately. So spelling errors will count against your score. Let's take a look at the lexical resource band descriptors. And here they are. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and have a quick read, then do that. But to get a band seven, really, you must be able to use a range of language to accurately report main trends and key features in the data. Also try and use advanced language that is natural without any errors. 
and try and use collocations to further discuss key information. Now, collocations are very commonly paired words that make a phrase. They're commonly paired by native speakers. I'll be teaching a lot of collocations in the vocabulary section of this course. And finally, on to our last of the four band descriptors, grammatical range and accuracy, which measures your ability to use grammar structures. So you're going to have to use a range of sentence types, such as simple, compound, complex, and compound complex. Now, these are just four sentence types that I'm going to be teaching you how to write and use. But there are other types of language that we can use to boost your grammatical range and accuracy score. So you'll need to make less grammar errors in your writing. So missing plurals, incorrect tense, not using the sentence types accurately. Now, a really great way to improve grammar is, of course, to learn the rules, but reading will really help you too. And also, use punctuation accurately throughout your writing, such as um, using brackets and hyphens. And I'll show you some great types of punctuation you can use in your writing. So here are the band descriptors, and this is what we'll need to do to achieve a band seven. Use a range of sentence types and structures, such as what we saw before. When writing, it's really important that you read back and check for any errors and edit any of these errors out. And also use a range of punctuation. As I mentioned, brackets, commons, hyphens, these are all really easy pieces of punctuation you can use to show the examiner you have a good level of fluency and are able to use grammar in English really well. So really, that brings us to the end of the four sections and some highlighted information about how you can achieve the band seven. A lot of the following lesson throughout this course will be looking at those sevens and eights band scores. So a lot of the skills I'll be teaching you are all really focused on scoring seven plus in the four sections from the band descriptors. So here is the full band descriptor the examiner uses to give your report a score. Now, if you'd like, you can pause the video here and have a read through, but it's really not that important. You understand and memorize all of these bullet points, but it's good to have a read through so that you can understand the mindset of the examiner and then you know what to include in your writing. Of course, once again, all the lessons and skills I teach really are looking to help you boost your band score against these four criteria. So that brings us to the end of this lesson on band descriptors and how the examiner marks you for IELTS Task 1. See you in the next lesson.